All right, hello from sunny Venice, California, you guys. Uh, today we're going to explore a little bit more about pentatonic theory. Um, you will remember from my last video on pentatonics that um, the pentatonics eliminate the need uh, to think about the modes. Um, I made that pretty much clear. Um, also, I just as a little kind of disclaimer, uh, studying pentatonic theory isn't going to do much for you in regards to composition and writing uh, pieces of music. This more has to do with on-the-spot soloing and improvisation, and that's really where this whole pentatonic thing is headed. Um, so you composers, you should really refer more to the Greek modes and the major minor key system. And finally, when I get into the blues, there's some interesting things about chord movement there as well. All right, so... Um, the modes are not so much uh, about harmony, although they do depend on harmony. It's just that they're not so dependent on harmony as the, uh, the modes are. Um, it's more about the melody with these things, and we're going to touch on all sorts of things regarding little tricks and stuff like that regarding the pentatonic scale, what you could do with them, uh, and that sort of thing. Now, I did mention that the um, pentatonic scale has two roots. So, um, now, uh, probably this particular shape is the one that every guitar player is probably the first scale they learn how to play, if, if they're not learning from a Mel Bay book, at least. I refer to this shape as shape one, and you'll see why later. This is the first, most primal uh, shape for guitar, so I call it one. There are five different shapes, we'll get to that. All right, now I said that the pentatonic scale either has a minor root in the, in the uh, index finger or a major root in the pinky. So if, in other words, if we think of this as A minor and this as C major, whatever the ending chord of a song is, if, it, if the ending chord of a song happens to be A minor, then this root will apply to, uh, to that situation. I'll demonstrate with an A minor rooted chord progression. If you have a song that ends in C major instead, remember the two roots A minor and C major, I'll do a C major bass progression. Now you notice it wants to go to my pinky and not my uh, index finger. Also notice a qualitative difference. I would say maybe the first one, the first uh, situation minor is much more serious, um, could apply more to rock where the uh, the major rooted one sounds a little more countryish. I don't know if you noticed that, um, but definitely uh, and by the way all those moves uh, Jimi Hendrix must have looked into country music in his early days because he does a lot. All those kinds of moves, Jimi did a lot of that stuff, and I think he appreciated some of the country players. All right, so anyway, uh, yes, the minor pentatonics, uh, th it's not minor, it's not major, it's one of the two, depending on the situation. But the pentatonic scale has two roots, uh, index finger root in the shape, and then pinky root over here, index finger being minor, pinky being major. And although it has two roots, it has three functions. Uh, the first two functions correspond exactly with the major and minor thing. It has a minor function, so it would function in a minor key like A minor. It has a major function, so it would function in a major key like C major. But then it has minor under major. Now minor under major, why minor under major? Um, chords take precedence over notes. Three guys can beat up one guy much more easily than one guy could beat up three. So there's more power in a chord because it's comprised of a group. Um, so the overriding umbrella of a chord progression would be uh, what the pentatonic sits under. 
So if you have a major chord progression and you put the minor pentatonic under that umbrella, what you get is a blues sound. Okay, now I have to be a little specific about this because really there are three systems. One is major bass, one's minor bass, and one's blues bass. Um, the dominant seventh chord is a major chord for all intents and purposes. It just has an extra note added to it. So it functions very close to a major chord. Um, now what happens when you put the minor against the major, and I'm really going to exaggerate because I'm not even going to do a seventh chord, but I'm going to do a one, four, five in major and I'm going to play the minor pentatonic against it. Let me really highlight this. This is an A major, that's a root chord you can hear it end on A, right? This is our minor finger, this is our major finger. So if I take my pinky down to A, I will have the major pentatonic and it will work against this uh, uh, chord progression, of course. the minor pentatonic against it, suddenly it's going to sound like early rock and roll blues. Alright, now I use some blue notes and passing tones in there, so sorry about that, but basically it's the uh, uh, rooted in A, but it's playing against A major. So we have the minor root against the major chord. That is the third function. So you have a minor function, a major function, and a blues function, and all three have completely different character, which is a cool thing because one scale generates three different types of sound for you. So that's a pretty good deal. Um, all right, so that's that for that. Now, one thing you should know is that uh, there are five shapes of the pentatonic scale, each shape based on one of the notes of the scale. Now, uh, the notes are A, C, E, G, A, C, D, E, G. So if I start on my G note here, the low E string, I got G, A, C, D, E. All right, now I can start the pentatonic scale and get a different shape if I start on the G note as opposed to starting on the A note, which will give me another shape. If I start on the C note, I'll get yet another shape, the D note another, and the E note another. Now here's the thing though, on a piano it's all just one shape, but on a guitar you have five shapes. So the pianist can understand very clearly this is one scale and one scale alone. It's really abundantly important that you understand that all five of these shapes are the same exact damn big ass scale. And they will sound exactly the same. Uh, now, uh, let me demonstrate that fact in a moment, actually, because I want to show you the five shapes. And by the way, I will have a link to the five shapes under the description of this video that you could download it. All right, but here we go. Here's shape. Uh, I call this shape one. If I go up, I get one, two, three, four, five. This one is way high up in the neck, so I drop it down an octave, and I call this shape five. And this shape is like this. That's shape five. Shape one is the primal shape that every guitar player learns. And they will call this A minor pentatonic, disregarding the fact that it's also C major. And the next shape up, shape two, they will call this the major pentatonic, in spite of the fact that it also serves as an A minor pentatonic. The only difference between the two is on the A minor pentatonic, you're what they call the A minor pentatonic, it's starting on the A root. This is starting on the C root, which is the major root. But the thing is, it's just like the modes. You can cycle through. A minor pentatonic is C major pentatonic. C major pentatonic is A minor pentatonic. And I will really sonically demonstrate that in a moment. All right, so shape five, shape one, shape two, Shape three, shape four, and I already did five down here. So um, I'm, I'm running through these fast because you, you could download the chart for them and learn to play them. All right, so now um, these are the five shapes. What I want to do is first set up an A minor progression. 
I'm going to play all five shapes to really, really drive home the fact that these are all the same damn scale rooted on the A note. My progression is going to be A minor to G to F, and I'm going to use all five different shapes to express the same exact sound. So I'm going to start with shape five. bass chord progression, all five shapes will now act like uh, a more country sound C major, and if I had a blues situation where I'm playing A minor pentatonic against the major sound, again all five shapes will uh, take on that blues sound. So it's very, very important to, uh, to uh, understand that all five of these shapes are one big ass scale on the guitar. It's too bad it's so complex like that. It really confounds a lot of uh, guitar players. Um, uh, again, it's much, much easier to understand on, uh, on the uh, piano than it is guitar. Now, uh, let's see, where should I go next? All right, so we, just to review quick, we have the three functions, the minor key function, the major key function, and the blues, or the minor environment function, the major environment function, and the blues environment function, which is ostensibly major, but more dominant seventh than anything else. Um, let's see, I, there's not much else I can say without getting into more you know, wordy kind of territory, and I want to save that for the next video. What I'm going to demonstrate on the next video is something I call neighborhood playing, where sometimes there are situations where the minor pentatonic scale cannot globally play across the chord progression. Um, that can be problematic, and uh, you may have to change the uh, root structure of the, of the shape by moving the shape in the right place. Let, let me see if I can explain this. Now, first of all, when, when we first talked about in the last video the minor pentatonic, I said this is the minor finger and this is the major finger. That only applies to that particular shape, shape one. Now, but there is this whole, uh, this movement from first finger to middle finger, minor root to major root, A to C, does exist on the different strings and a different string is assigned to it on each of the shapes. So if I Start with shape five. That's A to C right there. That's my minor root major root. So for shape five, if you want to do A minor, you have to search around until your first finger hits an A note. Let's say I want to do D minor. I take this shape. This is my minor root. And I have to find a D note with it. Pentatonic. I hope that was clear. It's this whole thing that we just did, but operating within a different shape and on a different string. If I go to the what they call the major shape, you'll find the relationship on the D string. Here's A to C. So let's say I need to go to the key of F major. This is my major note. Here's an F. same principle. These are my minor major relationships. Let's say I want to do uh, 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 G minor. Here's my G note. That's how it works for that scale. For shape four, you 
have the, uh, oh, sorry. You have the A to C relationship on the A string. So let's say I want to do C minor. This is the minor finger. This is the major finger. I go down to a C note with my minor finger and do that shape. You can hear how it fits in the C minor chord. Uh, let's see. Uh, can I do this one? No, I didn't do this one. Uh, shape three, there's A to C. So let's say I want to do E. Uh, let's get out of the minor thing for a second. Let's say I want to do A major. This is my major finger. This is my shape. So I have to take this C note down to A note to get A major. Uh, and I get... Uh, Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, I got thrown off there. Um. Right. Oh. All right, that gets a little complicated. So what I did on my chart, to me, this is an easier way to do it. If you just memorize the lowest minor and major roots, I don't use that system, but... Uh, but a student pointed out to me that that exists. The system I use is I find the lowest possible A and C roots and I use those to guide me. So in shape five, here's the minor root and here's the major root, A to C. So I take the shape, let's say I want to go to D major, this is my major note. There it is, D major. Uh, so the idea is you guide the shapes to the place you want to go based on the minor and major roots. On my chart, which is downloadable, uh, you'll see, uh, I think pink is minor and blue is major, something like that. You'll see that whole thing laid out there. And why that becomes important is if I have to change keys. Let's say, for example, I need to go from the key of uh, A minor to D minor. Well, I don't want to make this leap with the two shapes, right? So I want to find a, uh, a root, a D root, that's somewhere close to this A root. Well, in shape number four, there's my D minor root. Now I can move from A minor to D minor. Without moving my hand. All right, that takes a little bit of practice to study, but once you get it, you'll find it's really, really handy for improvisation. I think I'm going to wrap it up there, and maybe next time we'll talk about uh, about uh, neighborhood playing more in depth, and maybe I can describe a little more clearly than I just did how to find uh, navigate these uh, scale shapes so you can find a minor major root in different settings of keys or different roots. Um, I'm sorry if some of this is a little vague and hard to understand. I get that. And I'll try to make it a little bit more clear in my next video. Today I had a bunch of technical uh, problems with this damn uh, Zoom camera. So I'm cutting it short because I've been here for an hour and a half already trying to make a 20-minute video. So, all right. Take care, you guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.